Hi there, it's uh, the guys from Denim Dudes, Amy and Sam. We are here from our homes. Sam with a more exciting background, which we will explain later. And we wanted to share some of these uh, things that are going on right now. Obviously, you're all at home. I hope you're all safe and well. Uh, and we wanted to bring, bring a little bit of positivity into your living rooms and your homes. Uh, everything that's going on with Corona is really uncertain and crazy at the moment. Um, but there are some lovely stories of positivity and some great best practices from brands. So we're going to kind of share what's happening at the moment that's a little bit less dark and dismal. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Sam. Right. He's going to introduce this little section. So, yeah, obviously, um, fashion industry is in a flux of kind of change at the moment. No one really kind of knows what's going to happen. And obviously, after everything's over, the fashion industry is not really going to be the same again. Um, the crisis has already really sort of ushered in sort of a global economy into recession. And it seems people are sort of like crazed um, that how consumers are going to be living now. Um, and then also how they're going to be spending their money and even how they're dressing. A lot of these... Uh, no. A lot of these subjects we've been touching on in our presentation, um, which will be coming up soon as well. Um, but we thought here we'd just cover some of the topics, what we're seeing as brands and how they're reacting to the coronavirus at the moment. Um, and then some ideas of how sort of like help guide you guys along too. So if we kick off um, with one of the first um, sort of brands that we noticed that was reacting um, to the coronavirus, it was Greg Loren. Obviously he's known as sort of like a great craftsman. Um, and so one of his sort of instinctive sort of moves was to start um, creating and help sort of support um, his local community. And what he did is he used a atelier um, to create some DIY masks. Um, I believe that he was using, um, it was air conditioning, I think, filters. It was, was in Home Depot. Um, I think, so he had his brother-in-law or something was in, um, in the medical world. And so he asked his advice and asked him like, what can I get my hands on easily? to kind of like make this as close to medical grade as possible. And I've noticed, I think since they have actually, they've got proper materials now and are doing medical grade uh, masks, which is amazing. Yeah. I feel like he was one of the very first, wasn't he? To like yeah. mobilize people. Keep an update on what he's been doing on Instagram as well. He's reacting to what people are saying, getting advice from some of his like readers and followers. Um, mm. So he's done, I think two or three different versions. And I think he's using yeah. different materials that he's had lying around in his studio. So one of the examples which you can see here, um, it's like a canvas or a twill. And then yeah. he's done one with plaid as well. So it kind of like fits in with his brand ethos and sort of aesthetic as well. And then yeah. the other things which he just recently uploaded was this new collection of hand drawing pieces. Um, he said over the past couple of days, I've been drawing with only a Sharpie, an ultra fine point, uh, thick blue full point pen directly onto garments. And it's helped me reflect on so many things and sort through so many feelings during a time of such fear. Um, and I believe he's created like four or five different garments and then each of them will be sold off and then the money's going to be donated to um, local kind of relief in the area. He's one of the best. I feel like he is a really great example of an individual and a brand who has mobilized really quickly, done something really practical, and then also tapped into this sort of this connection, this human connection that we're all feeling and the idea of, uh, you know, expressing his emotions and what he's going through and sharing that with, uh, you know, his followers and, you know, with the world. And then like separately, yeah, I mean, raising that amount of money is, is really rad as well. So, um, you know, it, it kind of wins on so many levels and it's just like so heartfelt um, and, and uh, really inspirational. Um, and then I guess one thing that's probably been in a lot of your minds of um, the brands out there is just how much sort of impact it's having on consumers at the moment. Obviously there's been a huge sort of splash in spending, um, but it's also sort of prompting people to kind of question their purchases at the moment as well. It's not really about sort of like buying new garments and sort of flexing online. It's really about making conscious sort of decisions. And I think the brands that are kind of like aligning with the values of having some kind of um, empathy uh, with what's going on, it's really going to um, put them in a better light once all of this is over and people most likely to kind of align with those brands afterwards. Um, yeah. Reformation, who's based over in LA, they, again, they were quite quick to react as well. And I believe that they collaborated with the LA mayor. Um, and yeah, so very yeah, so they're putting together all the different manufacturers in the area. They've sort of been 
um, I guess, put in a position where they're the ones who are sort of helping delegate um, all the kind of like relief that's needed at the moment, of making masks or medical, medical equipment. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's brilliant to see brands like that stepping up to the plate. Yeah, for sure. Um, another, yeah, another brand based in LA who were really, really quick um, to, uh, you know, to uh, tool up and 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 move on this. Uh, I think, you know, I've seen a lot of people. I'm sure everyone else is the same. Seen a lot of people making masks um, since then. Um, and there've been some great people doing some great things from tiny, tiny little brands, you know, to, to bigger, more powerful ones. And I think that, again, that's been lovely to see that alignment. And also, you know, for instance, Greg Lauren saying, hey, you know, I'm looking for sewers. And so like we, we found like local sewers in LA who are working from their bedrooms are supplying to larger, uh, you know, initiatives as well, which has been really cool. And I think even just sort of the underlying thing of um, social responsibility as well, obviously, Reformations had that kind of in their ethos from the start. Yeah. And the fact yeah. that Lorenz like, using dead stock fabrics, there's probably going to be a lot of factories at the moment who are um, having orders cancelled and things. So it's good to see the brands are sort of yeah, doing the right thing and using the most yeah. of what's sort of around at the moment. Yeah, and, and utilising and mobilising what their strengths are, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then one we just saw come up the other day um, was Gene Logia, which is a really interesting one. Um, obviously, they have their uh, G2 machines. And the way that they're reacting and kind of pivoting at the moment is in the um, Spanish government, and they've transformed their G2 machine to um, be disinfecting um, medical equipment. Um, yeah. And there's a quote from the um, founder or one of the the seniors there at Jean Lodger and he said once we learned about the disinfection protocol developed by the Spanish government uh, we made a real hackathon with our team of engineers. I keep asking myself how is this possible it's because they poured themselves into the project. This shows how humans are capable of doing something unique We really have a focus and that's really kind of amazing to see how brands are sort of reacting quickly to this. Yeah, for sure. It's really, really cool. And, you know, and, and so many brands in, in lots of different ways, like you said, like they're utilizing what they have. It's really cool of Gene Logic. It's really awesome. Uh, and then let's go on to the next one then. Um, oh, I'm yeah, this talk is about this one, Amy, because there's a bit of controversy around it, I heard. Yeah, so it's interesting. I mean, like the whole thing about brands and messaging. I have, I mean, I'm not going to mention any names here because, you know, you know some of my friends obviously want to keep that private but I have noticed you know like some of my friends who work for brands and they've been really upset because people are trolling like so every brand out there is obviously trying to do the right thing and there is no real great solution to this it's not like someone's like figured it out um that there, there are so many different things you can do but it, it, it it's all going to require cutbacks and cancellations etc and obviously there's a lot of news of that and you know in the apparel press at the moment you know uh certain companies i'm not we're not going to go into all of that but certain companies who are cancelling orders you know predominantly in developing countries like bangladesh and vietnam etc etc it's a real freaking minefield out there what's interesting reformation obviously radical transparency is their tagline so they had to jump on this um, and they did this uh, Q&A with, I, think, I feel like she was like head of production or something like that, this lady. And they did these Q&As, you know, what's happening with the factories, what's happening with the employees, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it's funny because it's a great example of radical transparency. It's a great example of communicating with your customers. And I do think it's a, it's a good move. However, <laughs> my goodness, the amount of backlash it's, it's had on their Instagram feed is crazy. But I think that that I've heard from other friends I have in the industry from, you know, work for other brands, everyone's getting a lot of negative comments. You know, it's almost like no brand can do the right thing at the moment. You know, um, obviously everyone has to close their stores and, you know, um, and figure out how to pay their employees. And, um, you know, that requires cancelling of orders, et cetera, et cetera. And then you've got the supply chain to worry about. I think it's a really tricky one because I think in this, you know, in this day and age, these big corporations, obviously there are people at the top who are being paid a lot more. And I think um, the kind of fairer distribution of wealth is the way to go. I think we saw that in the, um, was it American Airlines or some airline company? Um, the, one of the CEOs like as, 
just said, I'm not going to take a wage for six months and that's going to help pay for everybody else. So it, it's a really, it's a really tricky minefield. Um, I, I think that what Reformation have done is a great attempt, but I think that all brands are going to kind of suffer at the moment. Um, you know, not sorry, Reformation. Who is this? This is, uh, um, Evelyn. Um, so I think, you know, it's like everyone's going to suffer to a certain extent and everyone's going to get a certain amount of backlash because this, we're in a, you know, global crisis and there's no good answer. And then moving on to some of the more creative stuff that we're seeing brands do at the moment, it's really interesting to see how brands are sort of engaging with their audiences in more creative ways to try and, I guess, uplift the mood a little bit. Um, so I think this is brands, the best way. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know? yeah. So oh, brands are sort of encouraging denim enthusiasts to get crafty at home um, with this denim DIY program where they ran a week-long series of events that uh, range from everything from Mending Mondays, Transformation Tuesday, Wild Wednesday. So um, I think they held on online tutorials and workshops and people could yeah, get involved with each of these kind of crafts and workshops. And it's kind of good in a way to get people involved, I guess, with the idea of sort of the circular economy, like reuse, recycle, um, and repair your jeans. Um, so there's a positive message behind it as well as it being something sort of fun and engaging for brands to do. Yeah, exactly. I think that like the fun direction, I think the next is the next slide, Levi's as well. Um, the, uh, the one was Wrangler, we just touched on um, another point of theirs of where they're um, team, well, it's contour brand, isn't it? I think that it's starting to yeah, produce medical. Yeah, um, I think it's, I think this is the smartest approach where you're kind of like doing something fun, lighthearted and interactive and then separately donating and doing good. You know, I think that's the, the, the kind of like the, the way forward really, you know, people need to sort of connect and be entertained um, and also know that the brands that they love are doing the right thing in, or in the background. Um, so yeah, moving on to Levi's, so there again, they've dedicated their whole social media platform to the new series of events called the 501 Live, so at one minute past five every day, they're inviting everyone from Snoop Dogg to do DJ sets, um, they've had live performances from people like Vic Mensa, um, and all of the profits going towards charities, I think, of choice for each of the artists. Um, and there's a quote here from John Saves, the CMO, and she says, I firmly believe change can be created when we work together, and together we will preserve through these times with empathy and hope. So again, there's that message around empathy and hope and how brands can really sort of communicate that to their audiences. Yeah, totally. Oh, I love this one. I think this is great. And I feel like somewhat, you know, I mean, Jack Moose is, you know, obviously, um, it's a very it's a very creative brand it's a very visual brand it's a very stylish brand and i feel like the engagement with you know tapping into other people's creativity has has really worked and again it's like that sort of that community the shareability um and i mean it is marketing but i feel like it's come from a good place you know it, it's come from a kind of um a fun place a playful place um and uh, there are so many amazing submissions with just like lemons and different fruits and different and stones and stuff like that um, emulating. It's a spring summer shoe, I think, isn't it? Well, he, yeah, he generally... It was, a, it was a challenge that um, Jack Miss had sort of set on the Instagram and they'd had like, I think, a fruit and like a potato or something under their feet and it was supposed to emulate one yeah. of their shoes. And so they put a challenge out to their kind of followers to emulate sort of similar ones. And then people have been doing everything from like candles under their feet and being really sort of creative. I what I really one. love about this is it kind of taps into their spring summer 20 thing where it was obviously all about the outdoors and inspired by nature and the way that they're kind of bringing nature indoors through this kind of like creative series is really yeah. sort of like beautiful and uplifting and it definitely fits in with the brand messaging as well. It's, it's, it's so, I feel like the best ideas out there are like, simple and um easy people can you know uh do it themselves and 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 engage with it and it's yeah there's so many there's so many great examples out there they're so beautiful um it's a really great great idea and so moving on to the next one this is what explains the funny background of what i've got on my screen at the moment so nintendo 
released a game called Animal Crossing, I think a few years ago, and originally it was sort of intended for sort of older people um, and even disabled people, and you could basically create your own kind of like home, you build like outfits for yourself and build like an interior, but there was no real kind of like goal to the game. It's just like more about sort of meditation and creating something. There's no kind of purpose to it, but apparently it really caught on with sort of young audience and released a new um, edition of it and people have been going crazy. Obviously people can't go outside and they are not be able to sort of flex their fit. So rather than doing it IRL, they're doing it digitally. So a lot of young kids at the moment, they're recreating sort of their favorite outfits with their favorite brands. Everything is like up right on there. I think the one on the left hand side is Bode. Um, yeah, Bode, yeah, I love that. He's like a Japanese denim dude, isn't he? He really is. So yeah. good. And I just saw that Heisen Abayati, they actually did an editorial that was based off all of these, where they worked with the girl who does um, the Animal Crossing archive fit, which is an Instagram which sort of documents all the different fits that they're finding. Um, yeah, totally. Dazed and confused also the kind of exhibition of their magazines. Um, which you can see on there as well. So again, this is interesting to see how new digital technologies are starting to come to the fore. We've already been talking about them a little bit in our presentations, but um, people are really sort of trying to grapple with it a bit more now that they're sort of confined to their homes. Yeah, I feel like, you know, what's happened with Corona is is, is very much that. It's just like things that were happening, themes that were building, you know, the whole fact that we were very online only, avatars, you know, using Instagram to flex, et cetera, et cetera. Brands like Carlings, who we've mentioned, and Fat the Fabricant, um, uh, that, you know, it, it sort of compounded this, and, and Corona is kind of like, uh, made these things much more uh, prevalent in, in our day-to-day -day life right now. I mean, yeah, another brand that's reacting to this is G-Star. They did a digital catwalk, and I think um, they invited sort of influencers to do um, like a catwalk show at home. And so it was literally people going down their hallways uh, wearing <laughs> G-Star fits, which was kind of fun. Yeah, again, using like humour, and yeah, it's so awesome. It's so awesome. Um, um, and then, yeah, we Selfridge is another example of new technology. I guess they've probably been planning this one for months, but they've just done a new digital campaign. Um, with, let me find the name of it. My notes. Yeah, sure. I don't know about this one. This is, um, this is yeah, one I, I just found out about today. Um, cool. Kat Taylor from, uh, I can't see the name of what it is, but basically it's called uh, DigiGal. So they're like a 3D animation designers. Um, and as Amy mentioned before, some brands like Carling, where they're sort of creating these digital collections that people can buy, but this is the first time we've seen it sort of happen at the kind of like a high level of like a brand like Selfridges who have done it. Um, so they've created a whole yeah, digital collection of the spring summer sort of line. So I'll just play the video here. Yeah, wicked. And what's interesting about this, she's um, the girl who designed it, she said that the idea of it was sort of tackling overproduction of waste and that 3D software provides designers with the ability to design, sample and customize and produce a virtual garment that can be sold online the very same day without the need for physical creative. And this makes sustainable make sell model where nothing is wasted entirely possible. So yes, you can see these done. You can see how realistic sort of the garments look yeah. moving. Super realistic, it's really cool. Um, the Fabricant as well has just launched um, Lena, which is a kind of a beta. You can, I don't know if you saw our friend, mutual friend Chanu did it the other day and you can like upload yourself into the, um, you know, they have a certain amount of garments online and you can upload yourself onto the platform. And again, it's like perfect timing when people are at home and they're looking for things to do. Um, so that's worth playing around with as well. And I think that draws us to the end of this one. So. Yeah. We've got another two segments that we'll be doing after this. Um, so stay tuned from doing these. Yay, see you later guys, bye. Okay, Sam. I